I am not skilled to understand. What God has willed, what God has planned. I only know at His right hand. Stands one who is my Savior. I take Him at His word and Christ died to save me, this I mean. And in my heart I find the need Of Him to be my Savior That He would leave His place on high And come for sinful man to die Counting strength, so what's it I? Before I knew my Savior, my Savior loves, my Savior lives, my Savior's always there for me. My God, He was my God, He is my God, He's always gonna be. My Savior loves, my Savior lives, my Savior's always there for me. God, He was my God, He is my God, He's always gonna be. Less living, dying, let me bring my strength, my solace from the spring. That He who lives to be my King once died to be my Savior. That he would leave his place on high and come for sinful man to die. You counted strength, so once did I. Before I knew my Savior, my Savior loves, my Savior lives, my Savior's always there for me. My God, He was my God, He is my God, He's always going to be. My Savior loves, my Savior lives, my Savior's always there for me. My God, He was my God, He is my God, He's always going to be. I am not skilled to understand what God has willed, what God has planned. I only know at His right hand stands one who is my Savior. It's amazing how you can sing these songs over and over again, and something just hits you. I was just reading this. Yes, living, dying, let me bring my strength, my solace from the spring, that he who lives to be my king the Savior who's going to be the King of the earth, who is the King, once died to be my Savior. The King became our Savior. And uh, that's what we worship, our King. Even though I walk through the valley, of the shadow of death your perfect love is casting out fear and even though I'm caught in the middle of the storms of this life I won't turn back I know you are near I will fear no evil for my God is with if my God is with whom then shall I fear? Whom then shall I fear? Oh no, you never let go through the calm and through the storm. Oh no, you never let go every high and every low. Oh no, you never let go, Lord, you never let go of me. Yes, I can see a light that is coming for the heart that holds on. 
a glorious light beyond all compare and there will be an end to these troubles but until that day comes we'll live to know you here on the earth and i will fear no evil for my god is with me and if my god is with whom then shall I fear? Whom then shall I fear? Oh no, you never let go through the calm and through the storm. Oh no, you never let go every high and every low. Oh no, you never let go, Lord, you never let go of me. Yes, I can see a light that is coming for the heart that holds on there will be an end to these troubles but until that day comes still I will praise you still I will praise you yes I can see a light that is coming for the heart that holds on there will be an end to these troubles but until that day comes, still I will praise you, still I will praise you. Oh no, you never let go through the calm and through the storm. Oh no, you never let go every high and every low. Oh no, you never let go. Lord, you never let go of me. Oh no, you never let go through the calm and through the storm. Oh no, you never let go every high and every low. Oh no, you never let go. Lord, you never let go of me. Here I am to worship, 
Here I am to bow down. Here I am to say that you're my God. You're all together lovely, all together worthy, all together wonderful to me. Here I am to worship, here I am to bow down, here I am to say that you're my God. You're all together lovely, all together worthy, all together wonderful to me. Hallelujah, Lord God. We thank you, Father, that you have been wonderful to us, Lord God. We thank you that you are the mighty God that conquered death, Lord God, and sin through the power of the cross, Lord. Even now, by faith, we invite you to have your way in this place, in our hearts, in our minds. Lord, we ask you to speak to our ears, Lord God. Give us ears to hear your voice. Lord, speak to our hearts, Lord God. Let us have hearts that would hear your voice. We ask you to speak vision, Lord God, purpose, Lord, in our lives, that you would lead us and guide us, Lord God. We ask this mighty in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Who needs a little purpose in their life? Anybody need purpose in your life? Some vision, direction? Amen. Me too. Hallelujah. Hey, this is a good way to get purpose. We're going to give unto the Lord. What's the Bible says? It's better to give the amen than to receive. It's good to give to the Lord according to the, his word. Amen. He does like a cheerful giver. Who's the, who's in here is a cheerful giver? All right. Hallelujah. Lord, we're going to give unto you, Lord God, pressed down, shaken together, and it said running over. Lord, we're going to give in faith and obedience to your word. We ask you, Lord, that you'd use it to multiply your kingdom, Lord God, to declare your word into this Crazy world, Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. 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 Hey, Daniel, I think you could turn the monitors down at least a little bit, if nothing else. I don't know. But the monitors seem, there you go, that's a little better. Praise God. Everybody got a handout? Nobody got a handout? Oh, they might be in the copier still. Well, we're going to go, I'm going to get started at Deuteronomy. We're going to start in Deuteronomy, chapter 8. Amen. I don't know about anybody else, but I know about my life. It's been a difficult week. It's been a difficult couple weeks. The Lord's kind of been dealing with me. He's been speaking in my heart. Sometimes when, hey, isn't it good when he speaks good blessings and, and peace and joy and prosperity in your life? Yeah. But then times he brings something else. What else can he bring to your life? Anything besides that? Hey, correction. Amen. That's one of the things we're going to look at. Anybody need correction in their life? Hallelujah. I like what you said, too, last night, Mike. Uh, I tuned in for a little bit, and the one thing I definitely heard you say, brother, I used to do a little bit of drugs and a little bit of alcohol, and yeah, that was a problem, but the Lord showed me that that wasn't the problem. What did you say the problem was? Discipline. Yeah, discipline, and we're called disciples, and the word disciple comes from the word discipline. We need to be disciplined, amen, disciplined in our faith, amen. So let's look in the book of Deuteronomy. This is kind of a, a cool passage, but the, like I said, the Lord's been kind of dealing with me, and this is a scripture that he gave me 15 years ago, right when my life was difficult. Me and my wife were going through some troubled times. I had been in rebellion. The Lord kind of crushed us, brought us to a breaking point, and as, as he was trying to restore me and heal me, I was struggling with that, and I, and I was, because like my brother said, discipline. I lack discipline too, brother. I, as a matter of fact, I lack discipline, and God gave me this scripture. So I was kind of reflecting on it, and, then, and not only was it good for then, but it was good for today. Amen? Is the word of God, has anybody in here got a word from God 15, 20 years ago, 10 years ago, 5 years ago, and you're still holding on to it today? Anybody? Hallelujah. Do you sometimes forget about it and you got to go back and pick it back up and say, hey, man, what was he saying? Sometimes, you know, it's the same solid word. Just like he says, he doesn't change yesterday, today, and forever. He's the same God. His word is always there. 
It's always a sure foundation. You turn on the news, it might change from day to day, week to week, what we're supposed to believe, what we're supposed to say, what we're supposed to be allowed to say, amen? But you go to the Word of God, and it supersedes it all, amen? And it brings a comfort, and it brings a sure foundation, amen? A sure word from God and at times like this, because everything in society changes. But God said this, he said, his word in not one way, no jot or one tittle will any way, right, pass away. Isn't that a comforting word that you know that when you stand before God one day, we're all going to stand before him. When you say, no, I stood on this word, you know he's going to pat you on the back and say, good job, because he knew you stood on the word. Now, not our interpretation of the word. Sometimes we like to distort the interpretation. But it's important to get God's interpretation. Amen? That's why I like to sip, sick, uh, stick to the simple scriptures. The simple scriptures don't even need interpretation. You just read it. It says, don't lie, you don't lie. It says, don't, st don't steal, you don't steal. It says, don't cheat, you don't cheat. Simple. No interpretation necessary. Amen? Let's look right here. Chapter 8, Deuteronomy, verse 1. This is what God said to his people. Every commandment which I command you win today. Isn't that a wonderful word? He says, the commandment that I give you today. Now, today is today, but does that cover yesterday and tomorrow? Because today is today, right? So it's for today. You must be, what did he say? Careful to observe it. Why? That we may live and multiply. Who wants to live and multiply? Amen? Does anybody got a bank account they want to see multiply? Does anybody want a family you want to see multiply? A job you want to see multiply? What's the best way to get that job to multiply, the bank account to multiply, the peace to multiply? Observe the commands of the Lord. Amen? And then he goes, that you may live and multiply. And then he says, go in and possess the land of which the Lord swore to your fathers. What land is he talking about? The promised land. Now, what was the promised land? Israel. Amen? What about our promised land? Do we have a promised land? Anybody have a promised land? Heaven. Heaven. Amen. Amen. Any other promised land? Thy kingdom come, thy will be done. Amen. Isn't that a promised land? Because it says his kingdom come. What happens if his kingdom come? Is that the promised land? Yeah. yeah it says in the kingdom of God is what? Righteousness, joy, and peace. Amen. But he gives us a word. He says, go in and possess the land which the Lord swore to your fathers. And it was a, word, uh, it was a promise that God made to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, as well as to you and I. Amen? Are those promises for you and I today? Yeah. yeah. And he goes on to say in verse 2, And you shall remember that the Lord your God... Now, this is the part that God spoke to me 20 years ago, 15 years ago. When it was all difficult and the road was muddy and I was serving God and my heart was set on God, but my whole life had been disrupted. And I didn't really understand. Well, I knew it. I had the same conclusion that Brother Mike came up with. I was lacking in discipline. But when he gave me this word, it brought such understanding. He says this. He said, don't forget the Lord your God. Is he your God today? Yes. He says, he led you all this way these 40 years. How many people is over 40 years old? Pretty much everybody. I don't see no youngsters. I know oh, one youngster. On. Keep living. <laughs> so when I, when I read that, I was 46 years old. So when I heard that word, and it was the word of God, but it wasn't just the word of God. It was the voice of the Lord specifically to me. And I knew that I had been 40 years I was 46 years old, so just the fact that it was 40 years in the wilderness. See, he brought them to a place, and he brought them out of bondage, and then he brought them to another place, and he's trying to take them into the promised land. But the promised land, like you said, took discipline. And, the, and to get to, into the promised land, it takes a discipline. And he said right here, he says, do not forget, listen to my commandment. See, sometimes we read the Bible and we think, well, that's God's word. It's good, but is it necessary? You ever thought that? Wow, do I really have to do all that? Should I have? To? You see, but it's the command of the Lord. And we always have to remember that when we read the Bible. It's not men did not write this Bible. How do we know men did not write it? Anybody? Because he said it. Because he's inspired by God. 
Anything else? Well, this is, go ahead, brother. That's what I cling to. Pastor, how many prophecies are were there about Jesus? About 3,000, 4,000? 300? Well, that's enough right there. But the, the, just on Jesus in certain specifics, specific prophecies that came to pass, and not only Jesus, how about Cyrus and, and Darius and, and when kingdoms came up and kingdoms went down and, and Nebuchadnezzar, so many prophecies that were written hundreds of years or thousands of years before they came to pass. And they came to pass exactly like the Word of God said. Now, what man could write that? Could you write, could you even write tomorrow what was going to, well, you might make a list. Well, tomorrow I'm going to go to this place and that place and that place. And sometimes that comes true. But a lot of times, even a list of five things you plan on doing in one day don't come true, right? Not that it's even prophetic. It's just saying, hey, this is my hopes. But God has the ability to 1,500 years in advance. Even some now we're waiting for prophecies to come past. But they, we know that's why it's the word of God. It's a sure hope because you can cling to it because it's the word of God, right? And he can specifically declare this is what's going to happen. And it comes to pass. What man can do that? What man can do that? Nobody can do that. Amen? They always try to give, you know, this is funny. They give Nostradamus more credit than Jesus. Now, isn't that funny? Amen? And he was probably just reading the Bible. Amen? But this is what he said. This is, this is, he said this. I led you all these 40 years in the wilderness. Now, when they were in the wilderness, were they God's people? Were they maybe in a little bit of judgment, discipline? Why were they in judgment or discipline? Oh, that goes on to say that. Because they didn't go into the promised land. He brought them up to the gate of the promised land and said, go on in. It's all yours. Take it. And they said, oh, no, there's giants over there. We're scared. We're going back. Sometimes in our life, God's bringing us up to places. And it seems bigger than our imagination or bigger than our abilities. And we get to this place and stop. And we run back to what's normal. Amen. You ever done that in your life? Amen. But here he's saying, hey, don't forget to go into the place that I've ordained for you to go into. And when you get in there, hold to my commandments. They're not just good ideas. They're the word of God spoken to you and I to protect us. See, the word of God isn't to, some people think the word of God is to rob you of fun. That's not what it's for. It's like this. Hey, it's like a roof. It's over your head. The rains come, the roof is protecting you. We don't have it here, but the snows come, it protects you, right? The weathers come, the elements come, the enemy comes, the word of God can protect you, amen? So he says, "Remind, be reminded of this, that I've led you all these 40 years in the wilderness to humble you. Does anybody need to be humbled? Amen. To test you, not just to humble you, to test you. Now, what do you think that means? Anybody to test you? Yeah. 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 Build your strength, you said? Yeah. Your faith, exactly right. To test you. One place it says to show you what's in your heart. It might even be right here. But to show you what's in your heart. That was the part that got to me the most. Because after, when he was speaking that to me, that's what he was showing me. Dan, there's things in your heart. And that's why it's been a tough week this week. Because He's been doing that again at work. He's been really showing me some things in my life, in my heart. And, you know, I've been struggling with it a little bit. It's like this. No, I don't want to hear it, God. But he wants to bring us into the promised land. Amen? He says, don't, be, don't forget that I've led you in the wilderness to humble you and to test you and to prove you to know what was in your heart. See, sometimes we think we know what's in our heart. And we might know what we're, is in our heart, but guess who really knows what's in our heart? God knows what's in our heart. Whether you would keep his commandments or not. Amen? Have you noticed in your life that in itself that sometimes we come to little bridges or ropes or doors and we find out maybe we're really not keeping the word of God? See, that's kind of why we go through the trials and the tribulations. It's to test our faith. It's to, it's to humble us. It's to bring us to a place we, that we recognize, hey, I'm not perfect, but I definitely need 
God in this situation. Amen. He doesn't want us crying out to our government for help. He doesn't want us to cry out for our enemy to help. I mean, those things are means for us, but we want to go to our God for help. And if he says go to the government to get help, by all means, go there. If he says go to your neighbor, go there. If he says go to get a job or go to the store, or whatever it might be. But we want to go to God, amen, for our help. We don't even want to go to our own understanding for our help. Because our own understanding will a lot, a lot of times lead us astray, amen. So he humbled you. What does it say? Verse 3. So he humbled you and he allowed you to hunger. What? God allowed me to hunger? Yeah. God will allow you to hunger. But don't you know, God, I told you told me I'd pay tithes and my life would be perfect and I would never have another need. No, it doesn't say that. He said to pay tithes and give unto God and he'd rebuke the devourer. But here he says, I humbled you and allowed you to hunger. See, in America, almost we would say it's a bad thing for someone to hunger. But there is a hungering that we need. Amen. Sometimes we push up more to the dinner table than we do to the bread of life table. Amen. And then we're hungering not in our belly, but we're hungering in our spirit. And that goes on to talk about this. And he says, and I fed you, what? With manna. He didn't say manna. What's a picture of manna of? Anybody? The bread of life. The bread of life. And I allowed you to hunger. And I fed you with manna, which you did not know, nor did your fathers know, that he might make you know that man shall not live by bread. And this is a prophecy right here. Why is this a prophecy? It's speaking forward to Jesus. Amen. What did Jesus say? He said, I am the bread of life. Amen. He said, take at the dinner table. He said, take, this is my body, break it, eat it. So here's a prophecy right here, fulfilled. And Jesus, in his perfect wisdom, went and had those situations so that he could fulfill the word of God. So when you read this and you tie it to the New Testament, you can say, man, look at what God did in his ultimate wisdom. Amen? Everybody wants bread. But doesn't everybody need bread? Do you want steak once in a while, uh, shrimp, crab? That's all good stuff, right? Nothing wrong with that stuff. How do we know there's nothing wrong with it? Because God gave it to us. But there's something that's more important. See, there's a time in our disciplined walk there's a time to eat from this buffet table, and there's a time to eat from this buffet table. See, sometimes it seems like in America we keep eating at the wrong buffet table. We keep eating the ones that they keep filling, and sometimes we eat at that one, and we eat at the one of the, uh, the television. I just read an article today that they said, man, I just read it. I wish I could share it with you, but it said that there, we all know this, but when I read the article, it just kind of gave me a better understanding how they're using the art they're using the television to deprogram and reprogram everybody into the certain thinking i forget what the, the actual word was but that's what they're doing they're programming you get all the channels you ever know when you go to like the news channels they all use the exact same buzzwords how come how come eight news channels all using the exact same buzzwords because it comes from the association oh you're right brother you're right it's it's a yeah and you know what it does it instills fear. It instills confidence in the government. It instills confidence in this service and that service. But do you ever hear it instill confidence in the Word of God? You ever hear? How many people watch like uh, programs where they're breaking down the Bible and they're talking about you know the Moses or this or this and that? You ever watch those and you go, man, this is going to be cool? And about five minutes in, what do you find about five or ten minutes in? These guys are lost. These guys are deceiving me. They're telling me lies right here. So they always start off really good. Yeah. Oh, Exodus. And then, and then about five minutes later, they say, could he really be a man of God? Could he really, you know, and they start downplaying it. See, because there's a, there's a move to downplay and pull us away from the word of God. And he's saying right here, he said, I'm going to take you in the promised land. I'm going to take you into a place full of flowing with milk and honey but know this i'm going to give you the manna i'm going to be the so source that feeds you and then we're when we're going in our walk we have to make a decision who is going to be our source i know everyone has the same struggle i do when you go you feel convicted sometimes or you think now i'm going to go read the bible you know, go to read the bible sometimes you get sleepy sometimes the phone rings 
And you go, man, I tried five minutes. I'm just going back to the TV. The TV's a lot easier to digest. You know what I'm saying? But then all of a sudden we find ourselves getting away from the only thing that will never change. Amen? The only thing that is the bread of life, the manna from God. Amen? That's what he even said right here. He said, I let you hunger so I could feed you the manna. Amen? There might be some of us in here that have been dining on the wrong stuff more than we should. And God's saying, hey, I want you to pull away. I don't know if you know it, but tonight is da- sundown is uh, Yom Kippur. Perfect time to fast. We're going to be fasting from tonight at sundown till when? Tomorrow at sundown. The Day of Atonement. Amen? Jesus is the Day of Atonement. Amen? Let's read on. Feed you with manna which you did not know. See, we didn't know about our need for manna. Nor did your fathers know that he might make you to know that man shall not live by bread alone, but man lives by every word that proceeds from the mouth of the Lord. Isn't that wonderful? He made us hunger so he could feed us manna so that he can make known to us that man does not live by every, but that, but that man lives by every word that proceeds from the mouth of the Lord. Amen? And then he says this, your garments did not wear out on you, nor did your foot swell these 40 years. You should know in your heart that a man, that a, as a man chastens his son, so the Lord your God chastens you. Amen? So they were being chastened. Why? Because he tried to bring them into a place and they didn't want to go. He didn't chase them out of anger. He didn't chase them. Well, actually, he does talk here a little bit that he did tell Moses, get out of the way, I'm going to kill him. And you know what Moses did? Moses got on his face and interceded. He said, don't kill him, God. These are your people. These are your inheritance. These are the people that you love. These are your children. Remember when I was reading that, it's in the next chapter, actually, when I read that, it made me think of Jesus. That's what he did. He said, Father, let me intercede on behalf of the... You know where he's sitting right now, right? He's interceding. He didn't just... Hey, he didn't just come here and live perfect. He didn't just come and fulfill the law. He didn't just come and die on the cross and was buried and then raised on the third day and then went to sit, sit at the right hand of the Father. But he's still working. He said, man, this is the people that I bought. These are the people that I redeemed. These are the people that I took the curse of the law off of them. God, these are my children. I'm going to intercede on behalf of them. And then he sends us the Holy Spirit. Now, that's the wonderful part. Because he's given us the gift of the comforter, the Holy Spirit. To help fulfill the the prayers of the Father through Jesus in our life. Amen? Amen. He says, not by might, nor by power, but by my spirit, says the Lord of hosts. Verse 6, therefore you shall keep the commandments of the Lord your God to walk in most of his ways when you feel like it. No, it doesn't say that. Hold on, let me read that again. To walk in his ways and to fear him. For the Lord your God is bringing you into a good land, a land of brooks, a land of water, of fountains and springs that flow out of your valleys and out of valleys and hills, a land of wheat and barley, of vines and fig trees and pomegranates, a land of olive oil and honey, a land in which you will eat bread without scarcity, in which you will lack nothing, a land in whose stones are iron and out of whose hills you can dig copper. When you have eaten and are full, then it gives them that's the land he's promising. He's promising this land. He said, I'm going to bring you to the land. I'm going to equip you to go in. I'm going to reassure you. I'm going to feed you manna from heaven. I'm going to meet you there. But when you get in there, what does he say? When you have eaten and are full, verse 10, then you shall bless the Lord your God for the good land which he has given you. Beware, he says, that you do not forget the Lord your God by not keeping his commandments, his judgments, and his statutes, which I command you today, lest when you have eaten and are full and have built beautiful houses and dwell in them, 
And when your herds and your flocks multiply and your silver and your gold are multiplied, see, that's what happened. They were getting blessed. They were getting a blessed in abundance. I think this is kind of what happened in America. As you can see now, we've been blessed in abundance. And he goes, and when this happens, he didn't say if it happens. He says, when this happens, when I've blessed you, when I've multiplied you, when I've opened up the floodgates, when I've given you tools, when I've given you sources, and I've given you manna, and when your herds and your flocks multiply, and your silver and your gold are multiplied, and all that you have is multiplied, when your heart is lifted up. doesn't say if. When your heart is lifted up, and you forget the Lord your God, who brought you out of the land of Egypt, who brought you out of bondage from the house of bondage, who led you through the great and terrible wilderness in which were fiery serpents and scorpions. Anybody have fiery serpents and scorpions in your life? Amen. He's reminding them. He's bringing us through and all these sources that come against them. Would the enemy be a, a scorpion or a serpent? Yeah, amen. But not only that, just life itself, our flesh itself, life itself and there's this trial in this wilderness and he's bringing us through and he didn't say he's going to eliminate all that stuff matter of fact of above that he said he's going to use it to test us and to humble us so he said why am i going through this why am i going well god's trying to test you god's trying to humble you god's trying to bring us to the next place amen that we could enter in who led you through the great and terrible wilderness in which were fiery serpents and scorpions and a thirsty land. Have you ever been in a thirsty land? Amen. Amen. Where there was no water. Who brought water for you out of the flinty rock? Who's the flinty rock? Christ. Amen. Who fed you in the wilderness with manna, which your fathers did not know, that he might humble you, that he might test you to do, good, to, to do you good in the end. Then you say in my in my heart in your heart, my power and the might of my hand have gained me with the, have gained me this wealth, and you shall remember the Lord your God, for it is He who gives you power to get wealth, that He may establish His covenant, which we, He swore to your fathers, as it is this day, as it is this day. Then it shall be if you by if if you by any means forget the Lord your God, and follow other gods and serve them and worship other gods and serve them and worship them I testify against you this day that you shall surely perish as the nations which the Lord destroys before you so you shall perish because you would not be obedient to the voice of the Lord your God those are harsh words amen what do you think of that anybody well let's read on let's look at verse 9 chapter 9 verse 1 I love this scripture right here. This is what he said. Hear, O Israel. Hear, O Israel. You are to cross over the Jordan today. See, some of us could be on a, a wilderness experience. Some of us could be at, the, at the, uh, the border of the land that God has brought us to, that he's trying to bring us into. And then we're letting the fiery things ca cause us distraction and hinder us. And sometimes if you're trying to press into something, you start defending against those things that are coming with, against you. And God's saying, no, hear, O Israel, hear my children. This is what my plan is for you. I want you, it's my desire for you to go into the land, the land that I have promised you, amen? Hear, O Israel, you are to cross over the Jordan today and go in and to do, dispossess the nations. What does that mean, dispossess? Kick them out. Take control. Conquer the ground. See, that's even a bad word even to use in America today. That's uh, politically incorrect to talk about conquering the ground. To dispossess the nations greater and mightier than yourself. He didn't bring them up to weak nations. He brought them up to mighty nations. Amen? Why do you think he brought them up to mighty nations? Exactly, to show himself strong. See, if they, he would have brought them up to a simple, a weak nation, and they got the uh, victory, who would they who would they pat on the back saying, look what you've done? Themselves. But he brought them up to mighty nations. See, there's giants in the land even today, I would say. There's battles. 
You say, how can I overcome? How can I overcome? Well, this is how we overcome. We know this, that the God Almighty is on our side. Not necessarily to go in and dispossess the land. Sometimes the land that needs to be dispossessed is this land. This attitude, this anxiety, this uh, rebellion, this flesh, right? This uh, whatever it might be. This is a lot of times the first land that needs to be conquered. Remember he said, I brought you these 40 years through so that I could humble you and test you. And I brought you to a place mightier than yourself. Cities and great cities, great and fortified up to heaven. A people great and tall, the descendants of Anak, Anakim. Who was that, remember? The giants. Who dealt with the giants? David. Whom you know and of whom you heard it said, who can stand before the descendants of Anak? Therefore understand today that the Lord your God is he who goes over before you as a consuming fire. He will destroy them and bring them down before you so you shall drive them out and destroy them quickly as the Lord has said to you. Amen? Amen. Now let's go on to the next chapter. Chapter 10. We'll close here in a minute. Verse, uh, what is it on there? 12? And now, again, and now Israel. What does the Lord require? First off, he brings us to the gate. And he says, go into the land, right? And on the journey, know this, that I've humbled you. I'm testing you. I'm proving you. I'm reassuring you. I'm letting you know who I am. How many people you could say in the last year or so, two years, that God has brought you to a new place in your faith, that you're realizing that God is mighty and you need him, and he's trying to lead you somewhere? Anybody? Praise God. How's that battle going? Anybody? Is it? Who said difficult? Praise God. Hallelujah. Why is it difficult, brother? Is God, is God speaking to your heart? Yes. Is he letting you know that those giants are all able to be dealt with? Yes. Well, the first thing he said in the first part we read is be obedient to what? The word of God. See, that's our victory against the enemy. If you want victory against the enemy, it's by obeying the word of God. Nobody's perfect in obeying the word of God. We all struggle. We all fall short. We all have battles with it. Things are easier here than other things over there. We're all in a difficult thing. But see, the Word of God never changes. And it's always the right path, and it's always the strength, and it's always the way through. So all we have to do is come to the Word of God and know, first off, that it's the Word of the God of heaven and earth, the Almighty God. It's His Word. And He can't be defeated. He cannot be defeated. The enemy comes along, and he tries to scare us, try to whisper doubt, whisper fear, make us back off. God will come along and you'll say something, hey, I'm going to bring you in. And you'll go, yeah, I'm coming in. And the enemy will come up and go, yeah, you can't do that. See, that's called spiritual warfare. And if, you, if you're not careful, you'll listen to the wrong voice. And you'll go, man, I was just going to go, ah. And you get scared and you stop. You back off. But you got to go back to what the word of God said. He said, no, God said he's been with me these 40 years. He's testing me. He's proving me. He's humbling me. Right? Because we could all, and I'm, the, I'm the, one of the worst, I go, oh, what are you talking about? I'm ready toe to toe. And God say, no, you're getting in my way. You see what I'm saying? Because it's not in the flesh that he wants to win. Man, I'm preaching to myself right now. Goodness gracious. <sighs> it's the word of God. It's the word of God. But we got to go and know this. He's the mighty God. And the path we're on is to humble us. Think about this. That's why Jesus said, I came to serve. How can you serve if you can't be humble? Just to serve is a humbling thing, right? 
And we all struggle in different areas, but we just have to go back to what the Word of God says. Man, I got to believe what it said, and that he's trying to take me somewhere. And then, now, I've read the Bible lots of times, and I've never read, and I've never even probably read the Word easy. I might have read the Word easy in there, but he never said it was going to be easy. He never said any of it was going to be easy. Matter of fact, he said there's giants over there, and he said they're great and mighty giants, and I'm going to bring you there, but I'm going to use that circumstance to increase your faith, right? So wherever you're at, brother, just know that. You can go in faith, believing the word of God. And all of us, not just you, all of us. I'm going to read this again. And now Israel, verse 12, what does the Lord require of you? But to fear the Lord. See, that's even bad teaching in America today. What do you mean fear the Lord? I don't fear the Lord. First thing he says is, what does he require of you? To fear the Lord. That's what he said. I don't fear the Lord. Well, then you need to read your Bible, because the Bible says over and over and over, fear the Lord. It's required of you. That's the first thing he said. And then he goes on to say, to walk in all of his ways. Not some of his ways. All of his ways. And when we fall short, we don't keep walking in our way. We stop and just say, God, I'm missing it right now. I need some help. Because your word said, I'm supposed to walk in all your ways. I need a victory here. And some things you might struggle with over and over and over and over and over. That's all right. But as soon as we say, well, I guess the word doesn't really mean that. And then we just twisted the word of God. And we go, no, we got to go back to, no, well, this is what it said. I need to overcome this. And then you remind yourself, he died on the cross to take away the sin so that I could overcome my flesh. Not so I could live in my flesh. Not so I could live in sin. So that I could overcome my flesh. And then when he got done, he said this, it is finished. And then he said, I'm going to give you the Holy Spirit. So to fear the Lord your God and to walk in all his ways and to what? Love him. You know, we all say we love God, and I, I'm sure, and it's easy to love God. But one of the ways we love God is by loving people. Amen? That's where the rubber meets the road, and that's where the difficult part comes. Amen? But he says to love him. And the best way to love God is to love others. And to serve the Lord. And to keep the commandments. Here he's saying it again. To keep the commandments of the Lord and his statutes, which I command you today. For Which I command you today, what? For your good amen that's right not for his good for our good indeed have lord your god also the earth with all that is in it the lord delighted only in your fathers to love them and he chose their descendants that's us after them see he didn't choose edom he didn't choose this nation. He didn't choose that. He chose Jacob, amen? He chose Abraham and his descendants. And we're the descendants of Abraham through faith. After them, you above all peoples, as it is this day. Therefore, and you were preach, praying this earlier, brother, circumcise the foreskins of your hearts and be stiff-necked no longer. For the Lord your God is God of gods and Lord of lords. The great God, mighty and awesome, who shows no partiality, nor takes a bribe. Isn't that wonderful? He doesn't take a bribe. You can't buy him off. So that you say, well, good, I don't need to put ties in there. No, now you're ripping them off. So there's a difference. Ripping them off or bribing them, paying them off. You can't do either. You shouldn't do either. He administers justice for the fathers, fatherless and the widow and loves the stranger giving him food and clothing. Therefore, love the stranger, for you were strangers in the land of Egypt. You shall fear the Lord your God. You shall serve him, and to him you shall what? Hold fast. And take oaths in his name. He is your praise, and he is your God, who has done for you these great and awesome things which your eyes have seen. Has God done miraculous things in your life? Amen? Yeah. Amen. Your fathers went down to Egypt, with 70 persons, and now the Lord your God has made you as the stars of heaven in multitude. Now, at this point, they were like over a million. So they went into Egypt, about 70 people. They came out like a million, a million and a half, maybe even two. 
But that's what he's saying. Hey, I brought you out. I delivered you. I multiplied you. Amen? Does anybody got anything they want to throw in on that, Cher? Are you done, yep, we're done, brother. Hallelujah. I love that. What he has done for you. Amen, I love that too. Yeah. I like that, brother. See, sometimes we get going and we, we rob God of even that, the glory that he's done for us. I mean, everyone in here has been probably broke and penniless and hungry and destitute and not knowing what's going to come tomorrow. Every one of us had those struggles at different times. You get going in life, and sometimes we forget that it's God that brought us through. We get going, and we got this coming in and that coming in. we got to remind ourselves, no, it is God that has brought us through. We don't want to rob God of his credit. Amen. Anybody else? Instructions. Yeah. I like that. Amen. Who said that? God said that. That's right. That's right. Hold on. Yeah. It wasn't man that said that. It was God that said that. Don't you know he's a blessing God? Yeah, he is a blessing God. But he also mentioned something about curses. Amen. Go ahead, brother. Amen. Man, praise God. That's right, brother. Yeah, go ahead. I've had that happen. I've had that happen too. Amen. What he really wants more than anything is us to be intimate with him. What he wants is us to be son, daughter to the father that knows him intimately. If, I mean, when you wanted money from your mom or dad, did you just go up and coldly try to get it or did you go up and kind of love on him a little bit? You know, that, that's what he wants, a little love from us. Not for money, but he wants us to come to him as father. Amen? Go ahead, brother. Praise God. Amen. Manna. Wrong kind of manna. Okay. The word Bible means the basic instruction before you leave earth. Amen. It's instruction. Amen. It is instruction. It says yes, yes. He says, son, my son, my daughter, here. Amen. Let's close. Our, let's close. Let's close. Lord God, we thank you, Father, that we can trust you. You are trustworthy, Father. You know each and every one of us intimately, Lord God. You know where we're at. You know what we need. You know our struggles, our doubts, our fears. 
Lord, I just come to you right now by faith with my brothers, my sisters, Lord God, and I, and I ask you to speak to each and every one of our heart as only you can, Father, that you would give us clarity, that you would give us purpose, Lord God, that you would give us direction, Lord God. We need you right now more than we've ever needed you in our lives, Lord. There's so much distraction out there, so much confusion, so much deception, Lord God, but it says in the Bible that the word of God will always be sure. It will never change yesterday, today, or forever, Lord God. It's, sure, it's a sure foundation, Lord God. It is not sinking sand, Lord. So I pray right now that you would help each and every one of us, Lord God, that you would unclog our ears, that you would give us ears to hear, that you would speak life, like my brother said, into each and every one of us, Lord, that you would lead us, Lord, on paths of righteousness, Lord, for your name's sake. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. We're going to uh, close, uh, do a closing song. Worship Jesus. Hallelujah, Lord. All to Jesus I surrender. All to him I freely give. I will ever love and trust him in his presence daily he live i surrender all i surrender all all to thee my blessed savior i surrender all all to jesus I surrender, make me Savior, holy thine. Let me know thy Holy Spirit, truly know that thou art mine. I surrender all, I surrender all. All to Thee, my blessed Savior, I surrender all. All to Jesus I surrender, Lord, I give myself to Thee. Fill me with Thy love and power, let thy blessing fall on me. I surrender all. I surrender all. All to thee, my blessed Savior, I surrender all. I surrender all, I surrender all, all to Thee, my blessed Savior, I surrender all. Lord, I ask You to help each and every one of us surrender, Lord God, as You make Yourself known, Lord, help us to surrender and walk in faith with you. According to your word, Lord, I pray in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. The food bank's open. If anybody wants food, you got something, Pastor? Yep. Amen. The army. The army of God. Amen.